全球超级巨星三部 K 刚刚赢得人类历史上最伟大的发现之一，科学家们对此感到很困惑。Fan bouquet have finally unlocked the gateway to the present moment. They say that the formula for this elixir was handed down to them on a long quest that took them from Beppu in Japan to Cairo in Egypt. The word is that they will be nominated for a Nobel Prize, not only for the discovery of now water, but for changing the way we experience music forever, with the release of Emptying the Face. The thing about now water is it doesn't just enhance the listening experience. It immerses you so deeply into the present moment that your whole creative zone shifts. You're so deeply entrenched in the sound and the feeling that you get from the vibrations that no matter how hard you try, you can't break free. The music becomes your world. It's like you're swimming in an ocean of colors and. Radiant vibrations. It's such a magical thing. It's so hard to describe with the English language. You have to experience it to really understand. Sun bouquets now water seem to contain an element that we in the science community have not discovered before. We are continuing extensive research to isolate this element in order to fully understand its power. All we can say for sure. Is that it is going to have tremendous benefit for our species. This is the story of emptying the vase. Two young men, Jules Jansen and N.J. Batty, known to the world as San Bouquet, have made a discovery that changes the way we experience life. San Bouquet have shared with the world a gift of universal manifestation. On the edge, high risk, they never backed out. They propelled themselves forward. With full force into a new dimension. Emptying the Vase isn't just an album. It isn't just songs. It is more than music. It is a way of life. If only Charles Darwin was here to witness the evolutionary shift in these two human beings. They have found all of the answers by realizing that the questions don't actually exist. Yeah, it was um, it was Julian's first time to Japan, and he arrived in Kansai International Airport. I met him. We we hung around Osaka for a couple of days. I lived in Osaka for about four years, so、um, I gave him a tour, of all the sights and sounds. And then we wanted to go on an adventure somewhere in Japan. I was sent an early demo of emptying the vase by a good friend who works for some bouquet. And the moment I pressed play, I knew it was going to change the way I felt about myself and my relationship with the universe. Hello there. I'm Dr. Dean Hammond. Joined today. By this wonderful man, thank you very much, N. J. Batty, for coming today. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, Dean. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come here and join us. Things have been really intense recently with working on the release of Emptying the Vase. Right, right, exactly.、Mm. And、uh, how do you feel now with all this、uh, newfound attention? <sighs> Look, at first、um, it was amazing. Oh yes. But now, personally, kind of getting to the point where I want some free time and away from the limelight to record our next album. Oh, and what a what a wonderful place to take some free time. To be honest, Doctor Dean,、um, I've been an admirer of your work for a long time and your intelligence. Oh, thank you, thank、uh, you, thank you. Ah. <laughs> 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 We're going to hell. Bang! Let's go to hell. I'm like, sit down, man. Sit down, and relax. And all the all the Japanese staff in the cafe were looking around, looking at us. I'm like, sit down, chill out. He goes, no, we're going to hell.、I'm、like, what do you mean? You like the place? It's called Beppu. Emptying the vase is the title of your album. What a terrific name! And tell me, how did you come up with that? Well, Dr. Dean, I can't take total credit for that.、Uh, I think Julian came up with it. But personally, now, if I reflect on it. Emptying the vase is about imagine our body as a vase or a vase, and that if we keep the same flowers in the same murky water for too long, the water goes yucky. So we have to throw out the water, put in new flowers. So the vase, this album, is about emptying our vase 
and then maybe pouring the water on our head, drinking the water, putting new beautiful flowers in there, or just keeping the bars empty. <laughs> well, I don't know if drinking the vase is such a great idea, but uh, all right then. Yeah. So, and you you refresh the vase in some way, or? Yeah, personally, with my vase, I'm thinking of. Actually, I haven't thought about it yet. Okay. <laughs> After 12 hours on a ferry, overnight, you finally arrive at the port of Bethus, and you look up, and there's mountains, and there's this buildings, and these, this town, and from this town, there's just this steam, like the whole town and its inhabitants are boiling in this hell, with this, this swell of energy, and bang, it's the birth of... Let's talk about the biggest army. Mm. It had been a long time I heard that song, and finally I got a chance to listen to it, so... Wow, what an amazing piece of work. I've been a great fan of yours, but this one really came and touched me somewhere, and I'd like to hear more about it from the artist himself. Well, uh, I, I guess it's about... It's a song about control and freedom. And that when we feel our freedom threatened, the mental construct of freedom, then perhaps uh, we will you know, defend to our death that freedom. And hence, I, I guess, military is still with us and has been with us throughout our, the history of humanity. So we wanted that song just to, I guess, remember and uh, shed some light on that. Yes, the biggest army. Yeah. What a fitting name. When Batty first came to me with the idea of the biggest army, he jumped up onto the couch and he looked at me and said, play the first thing that comes to you on the guitar. So I started strumming a, you know, an A suspended two chord on the guitar, you know, just two fingers. Dun, 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 change it to an E minor. Dun, 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 dun. And he starts singing. I'm a leader of the biggest army the world has ever seen. Only my wife, Julian Santo Justos, in the studio, studio me death. Just I'm a leader of the biggest army the world has ever seen. It was almost as if Batty had embodied the spirit of all the leaders, past and present, of all the big armies. He channeled that total narcissistic egoic energy and fired it at the microphone with such precision it shakes your bones when you hear it my in my 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 guys no biggest army you tell to my cameras my atmo na ka eiga mitai ni so leader san tachi wa desukuru na our heart shattered into a million pieces and all of the world's pain filled us up. Our vessels were full of all this pain. How can you love when you're not even equipped to feel the pain? Who needs love when you feel no pain? Who needs love when you feel no pain? such such a powerful powerful moment in my songwriting career that line who needs love when you feel no pain oh, oh. still to this day when I hear it I, I'm shattered and rebuilt in an instant almost as if I'm being crushed and grow at the same time. Jules had then replayed Empty the Vast to me in Park in Osaka, and I could not stop dancing. Every time I think of them, I just have to move my body. My favorite song of all time is Who Do You Touch the Most? Now tell me, who, 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 who do you 
touched the most Now tell me who, 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 who Do you touch the most Your lover or your phone Till there's nothing left to share Till there's nothing left at all Tell me how did we get here What happened to us all Till there's nothing left to share Who do you touch the most? Mm. Is it some sort of protest song? Ah, uh, look, some, as you know, some critics have said that it's a, a protest song against technology and mobile phones, but it's not about that. It's about who do we touch the most? <laughs> do we touch ourselves the most? Do we touch our lovers the most? Do we touch our phone the most? Do we touch water the most? I don't know. It was just, uh, you know, so, we, yeah, yeah. It's a hilarious title. <laughs> Who do you touch the most? Hopefully it's not yourself. <laughs> Look, <laughs> we haven't done a survey yet, but seeing that it's on the tip of everyone's tongue and it's become such a big hit, I mean, yeah. Maybe we're touching ourselves emotionally. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, Dr. Dean, to be honest, your paper on emotional intelligence about how the touch electrifies our intelligence, a simple touch electrifies our intelligence, you partly inspired the writing of that song. Yes, well, thank you, thank you. Who do you touch the most was, was an epiphany walking around, seeing everybody constantly attached to their mobile devices, disconnected from reality, creating an alternate reality, living in two places at once, sometimes in more than two places at once, living in all of these different realities. It's almost as if you're able to split your body, split your soul into many different pieces and hide them within the threads of these online worlds. Who are we? Where are we? Who are we touching? Who are we engaging with? It's something that we need to start pressing, answering, receiving, giving. How many worlds do we need to inhabit at the same time before we truly feel at peace within ourselves. We need to come back to the now. How long before we truly understand the power of what we grip in our hand? Sometimes empty hands allow us to receive the things that we can't receive if our hands are constantly busy. Pour me another drink. Sure. And, um, yeah. So I don't well, have a cup. We can't. I've drinking all mine, and it actually, it's, um, it's a sponsored logo, so we're not allowed to use it here, so. Yeah. So, pour me another drink. What's yes. that all about? It's about pouring another drink. It's, it's about, it's from a perspective in the film clip, the guy drinks himself to death in the film clip. So it's about when someone's on a true alcoholic bender, a true, a real good one, people say, oh, stop, stop drinking, you've had enough. But if you're on a mission, uh, I don't need your permission or we don't need people's permission to try and forget ourselves for a while. Humanity has been trying to forget themselves for a long time. 
And if it's binge drinking, it, it can be quite, uh, it, could, it can end up toxic and destructive for the self and others around. So it's a song which draws attention to those who may just get on those benders one time too many. Yes, well, very thoughtful words, and I hopefully it, it's going to reach out to somebody there in the future. I hope so. The power of Pour Me Another Drink comes from reminding ourselves with sufficient force the pain, the destruction, the guilt, the shame that comes from these benders, the soul-destroying grip that these benders place upon us in order to not repeat the cycle. Some mother took a pour me another drink. Pour me another drink. I'm having fun now. Oh, no, 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 It allows us to take off and look down at the path of destruction with fresh eyes in order to not recreate the same path. In ancient texts speak of enlightenment and nirvana. So could emptying the vates finally be a way for the modern world to understand and connect with such philosophies? I'm naked. Right. It's like when I was a little baby. Yeah. And I was, you know, unprotected. So, yeah. How does that figure in with anything you were going through when you wrote the song? When I wrote the song, I was more so thinking about repeating the same thing which I considered to be a mistake. Right. Feeling right. exposed. Yes, naked, yes. out in the cold, yes, and I begging know. for forgiveness. It's more of a song about forgiveness, I hope. Oh, forgiveness. Yeah. Oh, lovely. We all need a bit of forgiveness, don't we? Being naked, broken, lonely, cold, begging for forgiveness, trying to put the pieces back together. When you continually shatter something and try and reassemble it, it's never what it once was. The shape that it takes, the form that it embodies once it's been broken and re-put back together so many times. There's something that's beyond miraculous when you allow yourself to fully embrace the depths of your vulnerability. Wonderful, wonderful. This is the amazing album. And this just river's a, beautiful, by the way. Oh, I, I'm drifting off into some kind of place here as we continue with this uh, interview. It's, it's quite hard to focus sometimes. <laughs> with all the leaves floating down. Yeah, the it's just absolutely beautiful. Is, it, is this a real river? Like, the, the, film, the film crew had to go to amazing details. The carpenters, oh, we've had a lot of carpenters in here to create this scene. It wasn't easy. If, it I, if I could just add in a little um, quote. I once spoke to a man and he said, we're all like leaves floating down a river. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you, would, would you like to elaborate? <laughs> oh, sure. Um, we're all leaves floating down the river, and sometimes we, we meet with other leaves and we join together, but eventually we hit a rock or a fast point of the stream, and we go off in a different direction, or we may even go into a stagnant piece of yeah. water it, here and just not, be like leaves rotting. Right. It, it doesn't look like the best place to be, does it, really? The, no. no. I would hope know. I'm one of these flowing leaves, Dr. Dean. I, I, and it, and it, yeah. We're all just floating down the river, aren't we? Thank Could you be very a song. much. Yeah. That's a lovely new idea for uh, life on the river. The first time you immerse your body into the waters of Bapu, you know 
physiologically, metaphysically, and spiritually, you're being washed and cleansed. Then, the next level, when you get buried in the sand, yeah, 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 buried in the sand, you, you have basically the equivalent of your body weight on top of you of, of hot, steaming sand. You see the steam rising and, and they even build up the sand behind your neck so you, you're you buried in the sand and you've got almost got your head beneath the sand but your head's just up and you're looking at the ocean and you stay in there for 10 minutes and you experience that weightlessness of your body, your, your own weight upon yourself and the, these are things which you can only experience at Beppu and Beppu had had that impact on us, had that impact on Sam Bacay and it's like suddenly when when it's been a cloudy day or there's been rain and you can physically see that the clouds splitting and the sun comes out. And finally the, the sun was shining on, on, on me again. Yeah. I was sitting on a tree reading when I heard this beautiful voice. That's when I looked up and I saw Angel singing to a group of women sitting on his feet with their eyes closed. Next minute I see Jars come out of this tree holding this beautiful piece of wood. They then start playing this incredible rhythm with a beautiful piece of wood. Then he stopped and looked at me. And when he looked at me, I knew I had to start and dance. I was walking down the street one night, I think it was the second night we were there in Beppu, we were staying at a place called Yanagia. And there was this steam coming out of the street. It was quite warm, it was summer in Japan. Steam coming out of these vents in the street. And I can't really explain what happened, but I was overwhelmed by this feeling that everything around us is music. Everything just made sense. The colors, the sounds, the lights, the people's expressions on their faces, it was all music. And it was playing me this song and directing me and I was walking and I totally forgot that I was even walking with Batty. I was just walking down this street, this steam, just engulfed by this steam that was making me feel like I needed to follow this path. I arrived at this small little house. There was three bonsai trees on the left side of the door never forget it. I walked up to the door and that's when Batty broke my bubble. He said, what are you doing man? Like where are you going? That's, you don't know who lives there. Like you can't just walk up to people's houses around here. Like it's not normal in Japan to just walk up to people's houses and knock on the door. I said, I need to go in here. I need to go in here man. Like he, I can't explain it to you. I need to go into this house. He said, nah, man, you can't go in there. Like, what do you mean you've got to go in there? You can't just go into someone's house. You don't know, what are you doing? I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I need to go in there. And as we were sort of having this um, little bit of an argument out of the front, this young Japanese girl walks out and she looks at me, puts her hands together and bows like that. Nathan looked at me and was like, what is going on, man? Then he started speaking to her in Japanese and I didn't really understand what they were talking about. But then Batty said, yeah, man, you're right. You have to go in. You, you have to go in there, man. You have to go in and talk to this person. And then, then I started freaking out. At first I was just following the steam and I, the steam was directing me. Now it was like a logical decision and I was going, hang on a minute, what am I doing here? Like, why am I walking into this house? And, and now I was questioning it, but Batty was like, no man, you don't understand, you have to go in there. 
I said, are you going to come with me? He said, I can't. They've told me I can't. You're, you're on your own. Like You have to go in there by yourself. <laughs> I'm freaking out at this stage. Batty looks like he's in shock. I don't know what they were just talking about. So I followed this young girl into this house. And <laughs> look, I can't talk too much about what happened in there. But I met a woman that radiated the spirit of the universe. That's all I can really describe it as. <sighs> Look, you're gonna think what you wanna think, but she was a medicine woman from an ancient tradition. And she looked at me, she looked me dead in the eye. And she said to me, in a language I don't understand, you are the chosen one. You must undertake the quest that I'm about to send you on. I don't know what's going on. The house is full of steam, all these smells, colors turning into music in my mind. Everything's bending, reality's twisting. I don't know what's real. I don't know what's not real. I don't know if I'm dreaming. I don't know if I'm awake. I'm being spoken to in another language, but for some reason I understand it. I'm not going to talk too much more about what happened in there. It's for me to keep. But I walked out the front, I looked at Batty, and I said, we're going to Egypt, man. Mass riots broke out in Osaka after San Bouquet cancelled their performance at Osaka Joe Hall in 2017. <laughs> 1990年の抗議が暴徒化するなどこの街で起こった暴動は20回以上午前1時大阪西成区で真夜中のアイリン地区を歩く外国人観光客に出会いました夜を楽しむようにここは、かつて while at the time they didn't give the fans a reason for the cancellation, we now know it is because Ju Jansen was chosen to undertake a highly guarded mission by an unknown medicine woman in Beppu. The mission led them to Egypt and beyond. They never issued a formal apology, but have said they will go back to Osaka and put on the biggest spectacle that Osaka Joe Hall has ever seen. Before we knew it, we were on a plane to Egypt, Cairo. Julian had agreed to to go on this mission and there we were on a plane to Egypt. I was actually going to pick up something for the medicine woman in Beppu from another medicine woman in Egypt. I'm not going to talk about how they were interrelated and how their philosophies interconnected and were woven into a tapestry of ultimate realization. What I will say is I had to pick something up for the medicine woman in Beppu, from a medicine woman in Cairo. We can't talk much about what happened. I can't talk much about what happened, but I will share a little bit of, of how intense this journey was and how life-changing it was. We get to the airport and we get out and we were told that we're gonna meet another medicine woman because the woman that Julian had met in Beppu was a medicine woman. And Julian had promised that we'd go to Egypt, Cairo, to go meet this other medicine woman. And I don't know why, only Julian knows why. And so we we meet this, we're told that we'll be met by a couple at the airport. So we meet this couple and you know, they're holding up our, our names. And then we, we go to them and they, they don't even talk to us. They just gesture that we follow them. So we follow them, we get in the car, and I'm looking at, at Jules, like, what's going on, man? They don't even talk to us, and it's all right, it's all right. So we go, and we get in the car, and um, about five minutes away from the airport, they pull over on the side of the road, and they hand us uh, each this, what, what is like, you know, a, a pillowcase, you know, a bit of a, a rough pillowcase, and they gesture to us, once again with no words, that we put it over our heads, and I'm like, okay, to Jules, I, I think they want us to put this over our heads. He's like, what? 
this again, then we should just do it. Like, we agreed to go on this, we agreed to see this through to the end. Let's just put it over our heads. So we did. We then covered our heads and our faces in this pillowcase, which we couldn't see through when they were in darkness. So about, you know, a few minutes down the road, Julian starts flipping out. Jules is like, oh, man, what is this, man? What have you got me into? I'm like, hey, you agreed to go on this mission. He's like, I probably won't even see my children again. I'm like, man, chill out, chill out. He's out yelling in the back of the car. Chill out. I'm probably going to never see my family again, man. I'm like, chill out. You agreed to go on this mission. We were in Bethu. We were in the hells. And now we're in Egypt. Cairo, what's going on? You agreed to go down this path, man. You agreed to go down this walk, down this path, to walk down this path, to go on this mission. And of course it was going to be life-changing. Of course it was going to be confronting. Apart from one moment uh, of intense fear, when I had a Hessian bag pulled over my head and I was forced to travel to an unknown location in darkness, I was actually very comfortable and very at peace because I knew it was my path. I knew that I had to go on this journey. When I arrived in the location where the Egyptian medicine woman lived, I felt this wave, this wave of release. I had to undertake a ceremony under the guidance of the Egyptian medicine woman where my ego had to be totally dissolved before they knew that I was indeed the chosen one. Uh, Batty took part in the ceremony as well. There was lots of dancing and chanting, candles. Um, I'm not going to say too much, but there were things of the sacrificial nature that took place as well. I won't go into that. It was a moment of intense realization. I knew my path. I knew exactly what I had to do. She handed me this majestic golden box, which I received with honor, with great honor. I looked at her, she looked at me, and we smiled at each other. I turned around and I walked away. I met Tambuke while I was on a study tour in Egypt. And the four hours that I spent with him are honestly one of my life's greatest experiences. Jules told me that he was on a quest to receive a gift from a medicine woman, but he couldn't talk much about it. One of the greatest, most special moments that we shared was when NJ was teaching us this magical yoga flow next to the River Nile, and under his guidance, that was the first one that I ever accomplished to do Shirshasana. It was such an amazing moment for me, and now every time I do it, I just have to think of it. I was there when, when he met the medicine woman, but then NJ told me that I, I had to leave because I couldn't be part of the ceremony, and that really hurt me. I cried for days. That's the last time I saw them. I have not seen them since that moment. But I do follow them closely on Instagram, and I see that they're doing amazing things. I just wish that I get to see them again in person one day. I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. This is... This is too painful. I just love them and miss them so much. I can't really... talk too much 
about what happened in, in Egypt. We, we, I promised uh, to keep things secret, but all, all we can say, all, all I can say is that um, after Beppu and after Egypt, life was, life was never the same again. You know, it, it couldn't be, and it wasn't, and that is part of what makes Sambuke and emptying the vase what it is today because of what happened on that journey, because of what was initiated from Julian flying to Osaka, our time in Osaka, the time in the bakery, the Google search, the hells, the Bebu, the crocodiles, everything. Now you see the interconnectedness of it all. You see how if one little thing didn't happen, then also wouldn't be here today sharing the story. We met Sam Bouquet in Cairo, Egypt. They changed our lives forever. Sam Bouquet shared something special with us that we will <laughs> never forget. They performed emptying the vase for us, and we were both just released. And Jay Batty was singing and dancing. And can you believe Jules created music using only a rock <laughs> and a stick? I still got the rock. And I've still got the stick. We'll cherish them for all eternity. We love you, Sam Bouquet. I handed the golden box to the medicine woman in Beppu, and she received it with such grace. And, and that's where we undertook the final ceremony, which I definitely can't talk about at all. But after that ceremony was completed, um, that's when we finally received the gift of Ima Mizu, or now water. <sighs> what a journey. I hate San Boke, and I especially hate Jules Johnson. He stole my glory. I was supposed to be the chosen one. He ruined everything. Now I live alone in this jungle. And the only thing that keeps me going is knowing that one day I will get my revenge. <sighs> Actually, when we were in Egypt, we only took one photo. Do you want to see it? Hang on, I've got it. Let's have a look. Yeah, when me and Batty were talking about this uh, short film the other day, I, um, I dug it up. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> it's us in Egypt. Such an incredible journey. Yeah, we only took one photo. Uh, at the time, we were just so against taking photos. We had this, you know, dialogue that, Taking photos ruins the experience of things, you know, pull your phone out to take a photo to capture the memory, but it ruins the real memory. But when we were standing there uh, in front of the Sphinx and the pyramids were in the background, I knew, man, I said, look, we have to just take one photo and capture this moment. Batty still gets a little bit funny that we took that photo because he was really, really against social media and photography and all things of that nature. He was trying to convince himself that he was grounded in the now and in the moment, and, and so was I. And it wasn't until we actually received the gift of Ima Mizu that the now water, sorry, received the gift of now water that we understood we can bring ourselves into the present anytime we want. The now is always now doesn't matter whether you're taking a photo with your phone or using Instagram. I should post the photo of us in Egypt on Instagram. Like right now. Yeah, I'm going to post it now. Look at that. 333. I'm going to post it right now at 333. Batty, when you see this scene, you'll know exactly what I mean about the threes. 333. 333 on the 31st of December. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna post this photo on Instagram. Not many 
people know this but in 2017 Batty and I travelled to Egypt there it is us in Egypt what a journey so yeah if you're watching this documentary right now I want you to get on Instagram and find this post and leave a comment telling us how shocked you were when you found out the reason for our trip. <laughs> With ever increasing fear and anxiety among the human species, no water gives us a way back into the present moment. It allows anybody, anywhere to instantly access inner peace. No water allows us all to empty our own vases in order to fill them back up with the miraculous beauty of life. Listening to some bouquet does something to you. It enters a part of your being that has never been entered before. It opens you up to life completely. As a professional music reviewer, I have listened to tens of thousands of songs, but nothing will ever compare to the first time I heard them in the West. Thank you, Dr. Dean Hammond. I just want to say, your work on neurointelligence inspires me to rewire my pathways in the brain. And Amazing. more children should be studying your work, Dean. Amazing. Thank you very much. I, in that inspires me to extend those paths a little bit farther. Thank you. Into the universe. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Miss, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thanks. You know that feeling you get when you're doing something you love and you're so immersed in it that everything else disappears. That's now water. That's now water. That's the miracle. Thank you, NJ Batsy. Thank you, Juicy Jazzy. Empty the vast old oh, sample oh. gates, empty the vast old. Oh. Empty the vast old oh, sample gates, empty the vast old. Oh. oh, yes. Empty the vast old sample gates, empty the vast old. Oh. Go on. Empty the vast old sample gates, empty the vast old. Oh. One more. Empty the vast old sample gates, empty the vast old. Last one. Empty the vast old oh, sample gates, empty the vast old. Oh. Sometimes, sometimes, I pretend to have it all together. Plans I make, plans we make, sound like they'll last forever. I try to look like a self-made man, but I'm breaking at the seams. Facade will soon be over now. Shattered dreams. I'm naked, it's cold out here Exposed, I'm done now I'm naked, it's cold out here Exposed, I'm done now Crawling on my hands and knees Please let me in I'm crawling on my hands and knees Please let me back in 
I'm sorry, please It won't happen again I'm sorry, please It won't happen again Sometimes Sometimes I really do think I have it all together The things I say The things we say Sometimes I just say whatever I'm trying to look like I've got big plans But I'm scared that you'll see That I can never put these pieces where they're meant to be. I'm naked, it's cold out here. Exposed, I'm done now. I'm naked, it's cold out here. Exposed, I'm done now. Let me in. I'm crawling on my hands and knees. Please let me back in. I'm sorry. Please. It won't happen again. I'm sorry. Please. It won't happen again Sometimes Oh, sometimes I wish I had it all together